Hey guys, how's it going? So this is Josh with TechZone UK and in this video I want to be showing you my new Firebox Edge uh, X20e that I got off uh, eBay. Um, basically, uh, the story behind this uh, is that for a company that I um, uh, do work for, um, they have a, a server and they basically use this firewall here um, as their main um, not their main security, but obviously quite a big has a big impact on all their network security. Um, and out of all their network, this is the thing I knew the least about. And I thought that I would. I've always wanted to increase the network in my home. I mean, I'm using one of those bog standard home crappy network routers. Um, if you know BT, if you live in the UK and you know BT, you know what I'm on about. <laughs> They're awful. Um, so really wanted to upgrade my security because the firewall on those uh, routers is absolutely pathetic. There's no um, customization on the ports. You can't do any. Um, you can't basically edit the NAT settings. You can't assign IP addresses. Uh, the only thing you can do really is um, edit the DHCP range and change the IP of the actual um, node, and it's awful. So really, I just want to show you around a box, uh, around this box of the uh, Firebox X20e. Um, these things go for about 100 quid brand new, um, but luckily, uh, which I thought was pretty awesome, is I saw this one bidding at £10 on eBay. Uh, it, this is used by the way, although you're looking at it and it's pretty much in exact mint condition. I, I haven't noticed any flaws with it. I mean, I'm glad I got this one. Um, it's in pretty much mint condition, um, but it was in a used corporate environment. Uh, so I just wanted to show you around the... Uh, around the device really and then in the next video uh, I'm going to show you how you can connect this thing up and then in the video after that I'm going to show you guys um, pretty much uh, how you can get this thing to work online and set up some uh, I don't know things like uh, VPN and uh, I'll show you the NAT settings and how to port forward and things like that and how I'm going to set this up with my current router because um, my current router has a firewall built in and surprise surprise you can't actually change the NAT settings which sucks um, so basically as soon as I put this thing I'm pretty much double NATing and it screws up my network whenever I try and do firewall um, uh, rules and things like that so it sucks so let's have a look around the device uh, this is it it's pretty damn thin um, as you can see this is the side uh, this is the front so having a closer look at the front here uh, see if I get my camera to focus I'm using my phone for this so this will be quite interesting so just here um, this failover port um, I'll get onto this pretty much in a minute uh, WAP uh, wireless access point it'll tell you if it's on or off and then the link uh, this is pretty interesting um, this bottom row here um, it's basically you got three LAN ports. Um, you got they're all 100 megabit LAN. It's not gigabit LAN, but I'll tell you about that in a sec. Um, so each LAN port can go into this, and then it'll tell you if it's linked. So if they're obviously active and what's going on. And then you got your OPT port. Uh, this is pretty much like a DMZ, uh, putting items in a DMZ, um, demilitarized zone. Uh, and then you can, um, you know, have uh, web servers and stuff like that running, which is pretty awesome. That's what I like about this. And then uh, just here we have our WAN port, so our wireless access, not our wireless access point one one, but our wide area network port. Um, so I'll show you them in a set at the back. And then just at the side here, uh, we have our status and our power lights at the bottom here. So that's pretty much what the front shows you. Um, not really a huge amount, but you know the most important ones really are the WAN lights and the LAN lights. Uh, and if you are using failover, then the failover light, obviously. So let's have a look at the bo uh, back. There's the bottom. There, uh, it's nothing special. It's just got serial numbers and shit on. Uh, so as you can see, if I can get this to stay here, here we have two WAN ports. So our wide area network ports. Um, WAN ports are pretty much you know just a normal. Um, where your internet goes out, that's the WAN, that's the wide area network, the internet. And uh, pretty much you can have uh, two, um, which is awesome because, say, uh, I haven't actually got into load balancing yet, but 
I know that if you have uh, two plugged in, two different internet connections, so you had BT and Virgin Media, uh, you can have them plugged in, and if one fails, then it instantly and seamlessly goes over to the other. So if you're um, sending a file over the internet and one fails, uh, then the other will instantly kick in, or um, but it won't. Uh, there'll be no packet loss really. Um, that's what I was trying to say, <laughs> um, which is really cool. Um, so that's what I really like about this. This uh, you know, this uh, it's not really a, a router of such. Uh, that's what I really like about this firewall. And then we've got a OPT port. Now I've only got one, uh, but that doesn't make a huge difference because we can plug this. Um, into a switch and we can then have you know, lots and then we have our three um, three LAN ports so our local area network port so anything in here now what I was going to say was is my um, LAN uh, I I run on a gigabit LAN or I force everyone in the house to use gigabit LAN um, so when I'm streaming movies over from my desktop to my P, uh, to my um, uh, my TV downstairs, um, I can uh, then um, if I can spit it out, I can then stream things at a fast rate without them having to buffer and slow down a lot. So gigabit switch going into a hundred megabit LAN to, to give me internet access really and do the the NAT stuff and the VPN stuff and stuff like that. So then we've got our serial port, so this is cool because it basically means that you can plug straight into the serial and you can actually start at a config um, or edit the config of the device. And then uh, just here uh, we have the uh, reset button. Uh, I had to, <laughs> the people who actually I bought it from forgot to actually reset it. Um, so I had to find out how to reset it, but all you have to do if you get a new, if you get one that's used, hold the power button down and then when you're holding it put the power in and then keep holding it until that uh, that ATN light under there goes solid yellow and then you can release it and then reset the device and that's how you reset the device anyway uh, but this actually didn't come with a power lead um, so I had to find one but it works absolutely fine with what I got so uh, there we go so we've got two WANs, three LANs um, and one uh, OPT port. I can't remember what OPT stands for. I think it's optional or something like that. Um, but it's something like that. So uh, pretty much there is the device uh, in whole. And what I was going to say was is um, in the next video I'm going to show you how I hook it up. Now I actually bought um, a uh, I bought a, a modem uh, because this thing can act as a router, you see. So, I bought a um, modem. Uh, it, was only, it was basically because my main internet connection into this house is ADSL2. So I needed to convert ADSL2 into pretty much RJ45 to give me the um, cable connection I need to obviously plug into here without having to go through my current router and have double NAT. You know, and it's just not good um, so I uh, got a, a new modem putting it in bridge mode and then I'll be able to do all the PPOA, uh, PPOA um, on here because um, obviously it's over ADSL so I can do all the login info and you know stuff like that and it'd be good so uh, pretty much that's that's really it on the review and see you guys in the next one really take care